Well, hello, this is Matt Montgomery, Burris Sales Agronomist. Welcome to a new series on Burris Agronomy U. We call this one our nematode series. We want to introduce you to corn nematodes. We want to discuss the most famous nematode of all, the soybean cyst nematode. But first, we need to get you up to speed by providing a little background on nematodes and nematode anatomy. Don't worry, this is G-rated. No problem for the kiddos to be listening in. So what in the world is a nematode anyway? Well, nematodes are probably one of the most numerous multicellular organisms on the planet. Some chew up dead stuff, some hunt down and eat other nematodes, some infect animals, and some infect plants. If you wondered what these things look like, what they are, well, this is a great picture right here to start with. You get the impression that this was taken with a microscope, and that's because it was. These are actually juvenile soybean cyst nematodes in the picture. They're just a great example for us to start with. Think of these being shorter than the diameter of a period at the end of a sentence. You'll notice that they look worm-like, eel-like, or worm-like in appearance. And whenever I talk about nematodes, I mention that they do look this way, but they actually are very different from a worm. Nematodes have no connective tissues, or at least very little. Look at an earthworm cross-section, and you will see that there are connective tissues all over the place holding the thing together. You look at a nematode cross-section, and you'll see that most of the body is just this liquid gel-like stuff. There's no connective tissues at all. Here's my rough drawing of what a nematode looks like so we can talk about the parts. It gives you an idea of the parts associated with that nematode. We're going to work our way from the tail to the head capsule. And let's spell out those major parts first. First, we have the tail, eggs, ovaries, in the case of a female nematode, intestines, something called a basal bulb, the nerve ring, something called a median bulb, the dorsal esophageal gland orifice, and because that's such a big word, we just call it D-E-G-O for short, the stylet, and finally the head capsule. For you and me, these parts are kind of FYI. For a nematologist, though, they are the features used to differentiate one nematode from another. Well, let's begin with the tail of the nematode. A nematode has a head, a front end, and a nematode has a tail, a back end. And needless to say, a lot of the <clears throat> unpleasant in necessities of digestion occur here. Specifically, they occur at an opening in the tail called the anal pore. But that's not all. Also, needless to say, mating between nematode species is possible because of structures located here. And there are also sensory structures here, structures used to sense the surrounding environment. Remember, I did not mention a set of eyeballs on this thing, right? It has to find its host roots. Other nematodes has to move away from danger. And minus eyes to accomplish that, a nematode has these sensory structures on the tail end and the front end that helps it do so. Remember that I said the nematode its anatomy becomes important to helping nematologists differentiate species. Well, it also works that way for differentiating the sexes, and this is an example. Occasionally, a nematode will have two small flaps located on the tail end. This is called a bursa. I drew it in with the computer, and only males have it. Males also have structures termed spicules that are used during mating. So now that we've talked about the tail end and all those kind of uncomfortable things associated with the tail end, let's move on. And let's move on to talking about the next important anatomical feature. We just got done talking about mating, so we should mention eggs at this point. Nematode females release eggs into the soil. We're really talking about plant parasitic nematodes in this session. So we're going to be just specific to plant nematodes, plant parasitic nematodes, as we discuss all these points. I should also mention as we wrap up this slide right here that, yes, some of the eggs are released into the soil. 
sometimes certain nematode species hold those eggs or a portion of those eggs, I should say, within their body as well. A juvenile nematode develops within that egg, hatches from that egg, penetrates the root in the case of a plant parasitic nematode, and in many cases kind of figures out if it's going to be male or female after the fact. And those juveniles shed their skin, they molt a few times, and the life cycle often takes about a month for most plant parasitic nematode species to go from egg to adult. So again, the process, the life cycle, looks something like this. Egg, juvenile, adult. Now, I don't want this to be all abstract stuff, so I thought I'd pull in a slide that will show again during the cyst nematode session. This shows you what a nematode egg looks like, or what nematode eggs look like, I should say. I've always thought that they look kind of like gel caps. You can see the arrow pointing to them there. And these thread-like things are the juvenile nematodes, those eel-like critters you saw at the beginning. Side note would be that SCN, soybean cyst nematode, is a little different animal than some of the other critters out there. You can see that they don't stay eel-like, which is a little odd for nematodes. In this case, they became, became large and round and brown. Let's forget about that, though, and move back on through nematode anatomy. So we talked about the tail, and we also talked about reproduction and reproductive structures in passing, more so the male than the female. The ovaries on the female are, of course, where the eggs come from. A female is typically fertilized once. She uses stored sperm for the most part. A male mates a time or two, and then it dies. You can see these things don't have a long, long life for the most part. It's just not a very glorious existence. Okay, next up are the intestines, the portion of the anatomy from which the nematode absorbs nutrients found in its food. Remember, that organ is just floating around inside the nematode's liquid innards. The movement of the nematode is pretty much what makes stuff move through the intestines. Remember, there's no connecting muscular tissues on that intestine to move stuff along. It's literally just a tube, and food moves through it as the nematode flexes its body. The basal bulb can be found just ahead of the intestines. Now, this is important for the function of the nematode in the digestive function of the nematode, and it's also important in picking out which nematode is which, and I'll explain all that a little bit further. The basal bulb helps produce some of the suction that that nematode needs. Nematodes ingest liquid to sustain themselves, or at least plant parasitic nematodes do. They use that to sustain themselves, and they do so through a really small opening. There's no lapping or chewing with plant parasitic nematodes. It's all sucking in liquid, and the basal bulb helps provide some of the vacuum function that lets it pull stuff in. Now, for those asked to figure out one nematode from another, this thing right here, that basal bulb, also becomes important, an important structure, because how it overlaps with the intestine, believe it or not, can be key to identifying some nematodes. So tail, eggs, ovaries, intestines, basal bulb, and now we're going to talk about the nerve ring. The nerve ring of a nematode. Now that's an interesting subject. A nematode has a nervous system, so it's got nerves, neurons that signal it to move but it does not have a well-developed brain. Instead, it has this small bundle or ring, a nerve ring, that serves as the control center for how the nematode responds to different stimuli around it. Now, this is a good example of why some of this anatomy is actually important to know about. The nematode really has three well-developed well systems in its body that sometimes we target. 
it has developed a digestive system, right? It has a well-developed reproductive system, right? It has a well-developed nervous system. And in the past, we've exploited that well-developed nervous system to help control some plant parasitic nematodes. We have used neurotoxin insecticides, actually in this case called nematicides, to shut down the nervous system, killing this thing. Most of these have drop, dropped off as options in row crop production. We should also note that these are trademarked names that are used for the purpose of education in this presentation. Now about 15 years ago, the industry moved away from soil applied insecticides, nematicides, and it began to embrace seed treatments as the preferred approach. Now the pendulum has kind of swung back the other way on the insect front, but most of the movement in nematodes still swirls around seed treatments today. Three are more common to Burris customers. Avicta is the only seed treatment in our lineup that's really a nerve toxin. Votivo is supposed to just form a protective biological shell around the root, which is supposed to frustrate the nematode's access to the root system. Now, Alevo, which we will have on some of our beans, actually shuts down the process by which a nematode harvests the energy used to consume food. So in the case of Alevo and Evicta, we're targeting two parts of the nematode system specifically. We're knocking out in one case the nervous system and the other case we're kind of messing up the digestive system. The median bulb is another structure and it's also involved in the suction action that allows a nematode to pull in its food. It's really a one-way valve that allows food to pass through but does not allow food to ooze back out from the intestine. So we've been traveling along the digestive system of the nematode for a while now and we've come to a really important player in the digestive process, the DEGO. Remember, this is short for dorsal esophageal gland orifice. Digestive juices come from different places in the nematode, but lots of them are going to originate from right here. Some of those digestive juices are excreted into cells within the plant. And they cause the walls between those cells to degrade and they basically form this one large amorphous cell the plant nematode feeds off of. When we say they are excreted, that digestive juices are excreted, this is the structure that helps that happen. The stylet is literally a needle, similar in many ways to a needle used in any hospital. It's a hollow tube that's injected in the case of a plant parasitic nematode into the plant cell. Digestive juices are squirted through the stylet into the plant cell and cause the contents inside that cell to liquefy. The nutrient-laden soup is then sucked back through the stylet into the pharynx or esophagus through the median pumping bulb, through the basal bulb, down into the intestine. I guess this is kind of like a fly in many ways, and the fact that the digestion actually begins outside the body. By the way, all plant parasitic nematodes have a stylet. Not all nematodes with a stylet, though, are plant parasitic. And never forget that anatomy for the nematologist is important identification, and the stylet comes into play here. The stylet is also important when it comes to identification because some nematodes have an especially long stylet, an especially long needle when compared to the others. In fact, that stylet may be so long that a guide ring is found within the nematode to assure that the needle goes through the mouth and not through the side of the nematode's body. Needle and dagger nematodes in corn are examples of nematodes with really long stylets. And finally, we have come to the head capsule. 
the head capsule can actually latch onto a host plant. The head region consists of the mouth, that's the opening for the stylet, and ball-like lips, the attaching mechanisms. Remember earlier when we said that the nematode, in the absence of having any eyeballs, uses sensory organs to tell where food is and to migrate away from potentially dangerous vibrations? Well, the head has some of those sensory organs as well. They're called amphids, and they kind of act like heat-seeking missiles. They detect chemicals released from the root and draw the nematode toward higher and higher concentrations of those root chemicals. In other words, they draw it closer and closer to the root. So there you have it. Tail, egg, ovaries, intestines, basal bulb, nerve ring, median bulb, DEGO, stylet, and head capsule. That's about as brief as we can make an introduction to nematodes and nematode anatomy. It should get you well positioned for our sessions on soybean cyst nematode and corn nematodes. Thanks for watching another session of Burris Agronomy U. We look forward to having you in future sessions.